All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Russell Gay. I'm an associate professor of management and David W. Wilson chair in business ethics. Welcome to the faculty and staff ethics interview series. Today, we're joined by Jay Schmitz. Jay is an adjunct instructor in the management department since 2016. He's a plant manager at CPM Ross Camp in Waterloo for the last year. Before that, he spent several years in management and leadership roles at John Deere and Target, both heavily involved in some volunteer efforts throughout the Cedar Valley, triple business major um, as an undergrad at Iowa State, did his MBA at the University of Iowa. And we're going to talk a little bit of all over the place in, in ethics today. We'll talk some in academia, some in the business world. I don't think we'll get to pro wrestling today. We'll save that for another <laughs> another day. But um, yeah, we could talk about many things. So Jay, thank you for doing this and welcome to our, our podcast series. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's start kind of with the the, the kind of a cross between the academic and, and the, the business world and, and talk maybe about some of the real world ethical dilemmas that you've had to encounter or have brought into your classroom in, in some way, shape or form. Yeah, so I think um, what's what's interesting to me is when I read the, so I teach organizational management and there's an entire chapter on business ethics and how it should influence all the decision making. And, you know, when you read the chapter, it can be fairly dry and you can even, I think, as a, as a student, internalize it and say, oh, this won't ever actually happen. Everyone will just be ethical by default. And what I found when working in uh, the, the manufacturing space or just uh, at uh, private employment is sure. you can't just assume that and that mm -hmm. there are things, you know, one, we don't all come from the same exact ethical background. So we all have our own code, but we've had I've dealt with issues um, uh, between staff members that one staff member perceived as harassment, the other felt was okay. Um, and when you start to debrief those things, you hope that the person who thought they were okay learns from it, but that's not always the case. And sometimes they even knew they were acting incorrectly and, and did so anyway. So yeah. I think the, the two biggest examples I share with class is, that I had an operator um, who was concerned that one of um, the salary employees in my organization was manipulating numbers to make themselves look good. Um, and as I dug into it, it was sure enough the case that, that that was happening. And so as I probed deeper to understand, you know, why are you lying? Like I don't, right. as yeah. a manager myself, I don't try to put unnecessary pressure on people where they feel like they need to lie. Um, I had inherited this employee when I took the role and um, he had said basically, you know, previous managers, if the numbers were wrong, would just eviscerate them or chew them out or, or what have you. And so he got in the habit of just not wanting to share bad news and if, you know, tweaking wow. the numbers. And so, you know, what I initially perceived as, hey, this person is making a bad ethical decision. It was really sort of a self-preservation, you know, right. so, and the person corrected his behavior, you know, learned his lesson, still employed there. And I think that that's really what taught me that, okay, we can't just look at black and white and say, this is bad, this is good, or this person made an unethical, you kind of have to dig into the, why are people making the bad decisions too? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's not, and that's where the whole term ethical dilemma comes in. I mean, we can see both sides of a certain perspective here. Yeah, it looks yep. like it's obviously a bad choice, but maybe there's something more to it. And and yeah, I, as a former HR person, I can definitely appreciate that they're digging into a little bit more rather than just dropping the hammer and firing somebody for making yeah. a mistake on there. I mean, we all mess up from time to time, unfortunately. And what's key is what you learn from it and bounce back and how you do it differently in the future. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and stress definitely causes people to do or at least consider things they probably shouldn't. So there's no stress in the world today, though, right? Yeah, so that, that's yeah no. In today's world. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I do think that people need to, you know, they need to go in knowing what their ethical core values are and make sure that they do kind of that gut check before making a decision of, hey, will I be, will I be proud of this decision afterwards? Will I... Would I, will I be able to, I always kind of use my kids as the, as the compass. Will I be able to justify to them, you know, what, what just happened? And um, so, but yeah, it's uh it's pressure does weird things to people. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And you talking about the test, the kids and things, there's all these odd tests in the ethics world, like the mom test, the grandma test. If my mom or grandma find out I did this, yeah. or they're going to think worse of me. And yeah, I mean, they sound corny in theory, but if you actually stop to think about that answer, that, that's, there's a lot of credibility to, to that thought. Oh, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And one of the other things you started with at the start of that answer was breaking news. Some textbook chapters might be boring to read. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they just, sometimes they, they're a little dry. They need a little they bit of flair. They can be dry at times. Yes. <laughs> I, Sometimes our students don't think we realize that as well, but, but yeah, we get that at times, but sometimes yeah. it's material that we just need to focus on. Yeah. Yep. Any other dilemmas, the real world stuff that you bring into your classrooms? Yeah. So, you know, I think um, the, uh, uh, in addition to um, uh, just the overall kind of social issues that are, that are happening, you know, those, those come with what uh, you know, you, you want to make sure people understand um, that that's always evolving, and that to, right. to um, so I, I bring that up a lot. The other piece is um, I like to challenge students on. I actually have an ethical dilemma um, that I do through uh, poll everywhere. Some questions that we we nice. talk through, um, and you know, little things like. Uh, people who sort of milk expense reports, um, you know, what, and, and what the situations are, or, yeah. uh, you know, people who take from scrap bins at a company, um, because they know the company's just throwing it away, but they can sell it for a little, you know, things that uh, you wouldn't necessarily, you know, most people, when they think of ethics, think of the, the big, huge sure. issues, not yeah. the sneaking a couple extra dollars in their, in their Absolutely. pocket, which I find yeah. to be more common. So it's always fun to, uh, hear college students talk through that and then relate it back almost to, okay, when you as a student are put in a dilemma as far, or like, you know, other people are cheating in the class, you know, do you tell on them or do you kind of see uh, if, if you can get away with it too, just stuff like that. And you, you know, not all of them will admit like, oh yeah, I cheat too, but right. you, you can see the wheels turning at least. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, some of the some of the research I just had a paper published on this a couple months back, and it's about ninety percent of students that admit they've cheated in college. Yeah, you have to think of ninety percent admit. In reality, it's probably higher than that still. Yeah, sure yeah. Aren't comfortable saying yes, I've done it. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's troubling. I don't know if the numbers necessarily gotten higher in the last few years, but at least it looks like the prevalence to which they do it has at least increased. So yeah. that's, that's concerning, obviously, on there, too. Yeah. And I had to chuckle when you mentioned that the expense reports. Just the other day, I had Drew Kaler, who teaches in sales and marketing on here, and we got into expense reports and um, mileage rates and, and business travel meal per diems and that sort of area, yeah. too. So definitely a, a concept that, that lots of people in the business world are thinking about, too, from an ethical perspective. Yeah. Yeah. What about, say, since since your undergrad days to now, do you think that this concept of business ethics is more prevalent today? Is it a bigger issue today? Do we just know about it more because of social media advances? What are your thoughts on, on some of that? Yeah, so I I definitely, I've, I've been really happy to see how it's evolved since I was an undergrad. So right. when I was at Iowa State, that was right when the whole Enron debacle okay. that, in my opinion, kind of kickstarted a lot of this being part of our curriculums and just daily Absolutely. language, that's when it started. And I remember I was a junior, I believe at the time, um, and my instructors and professors were actually just sort of making fun of it. Not, not you know, the scope of it really hadn't set in right. yet. Right. And it was just sort of like, yep, that's business. You're always gonna have people get, get caught. And, you know, so to transition from kind of flippant comments about yeah. not worrying about it or just know that it happens to now, there's almost like this business activism sector that's auditing for ethics. I think exactly. it's done wonders for uh, the accounting community that now not only, you know, their expectation is not to make the books look good. It's to make sure that they're also right. valid. <laughs> and yeah. um, hopefully they still look good, yeah. but yes, do yeah, it the yeah. right way. <laughs> um, so I think that that's, that's been huge. Um, and I've had the privilege of uh, both at, at Deer, now CPM, of working with some really great accounting people that, you know, won't, won't jeopardize uh, the integrity of the brand or the company sure. um, just for kind of a short term, um, which, which is great. 
Um, I also think, you know, to spend uh, class, one of my 16 lectures a semester talking through different ethical scenarios. And then every time we talk about different decision making matrices, tie it back to making sure ethics is considered. I don't remember getting any of that as, as an undergrad. So hope, hopefully we get people that are entering the business world that are readily equipped to, to you know, do the right thing or at least consider right. what that right thing is. And for me as an undergrad, I was in HR, for, well, I changed my major several times, but ended up at HR eventually. And yeah, even for me, it was not that prevalent of an area on here. Like yep. you said, it in whatever we called our principles of management, I know it's org management here, but I don't remember what it was at, at Northern Illinois. Intro to management, I think is what it was. And yeah, there was a chapter in there and we covered that in some effort, but there wasn't a whole lot beyond that. There was no ethics yep. class I had to take and certainly was not a module in every class in the business school like it should be. Um, not that I'm saying every one of our classes treats it as, as important as they should now either, but yep. I think we at least make some effort to do a lecture or a guest speaker or a video or some an activity, something that, that gets at the ethics notion yep. at least every semester in each class. At least I hope that's the case. So well, I think it's cool on how it's evolving, even yeah. from what people expect from leadership and you know so you can't talk big corporate america without blending it with politics and regardless of people's personal politics but sure future employees are noticing now what where the donations that companies are going to and sure. you know even if even if that doesn't align with their ethical principles there you know there's either product boycotts mm -hmm. or they don't want to work there and um i couldn't have told you a single a single donation that a uh, company that I favored in college where it went, you know? And right, so right. I do think the age of hyper-focus and social media has helped that. Now, obviously right. there's other, there's other issues that come along with that, but, yeah. um, but I think, you know, it's, if, if the way is going to be very large companies with a lot of wealth, if they're being challenged by their employees, especially the, um, you know, more recent college graduates to do better and be better ethical actors out in the, their communities. That's outstanding. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. When I teach leadership, I bring up the Enron scandal every now and then. And I always think students will at least know a little bit about what I'm talking about. And it doesn't happen that often anymore. Yeah. It's always so hard for me to remember that, yeah, I get a year older every year, but the students are still always 21 or 22 when they yep. get to my class. And <laughs> yep. I talked about Seinfeld one day recently and just got blank stares. I'm like, I know, on, really? I actually did the exact same thing. I'm like, it's on Netflix. Go watch exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I realized like, oh, wait, there's going to be some jokes that will make you cringe. But ignore those. Come, well, I think folks. I heard they dropped some of the episodes from Netflix for that did reason. They? Cut out some of those. Yeah. Yeah. And there would be several they needed to look at a little bit from that regard. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that, that's a that's a great start on on some of these areas here. What about the bigger, let's say, takeaways for the, the students going into their business careers that you'd hope they they walk away with from your class or from your your positions in the in the business world and manufacturing things you wish students knew about ethics that maybe they don't know so well or things that you wish you would have known when you started off in your career. Yeah, I think some of it comes down to just allowing yourself to be vulnerable even in the workplace you know i know that that's changed from a um employment perspective i think a lot of people maybe sugarcoating reports or you know trying to make themselves look better a lot of that came from not wanting to necessarily look bad and i think that if most people just like any walk in life just like in your personal life if you admit at work that hey i'm struggling with this or these results aren't what i want them to be and you work through it ethically ultimately that's more rewarding than you know just putting a band-aid on it and hoping no one no one notices sure. i have literally yet to encounter a coworker that uh either fudges their numbers or sweeps problems under the rug whatever kind of cliche you want to put on it that do it doesn't eventually catch up to now that's not to say i worked with some people at uh deer that you know they were 25 years into their career when it kind of all caught up to them but you know okay. to have that stress of constantly worrying if people are going to find out about the skeletons in your closet it's just it's not worth it and right. Right. um but then you know i also hope students understand that there are companies and managers out there that 
with pressure applied, if they're pressuring you to do something um, unethical or that you foresee, if it feels wrong is what I generally say, it probably is. And yeah. you know, if you can't ask anyone in your company, call up one of your college professors, call up a resource or a friend that works at a different company and just run it by somebody exactly. else because people do, I think we forget how strong that company culture can be that if you're, if you're surrounded by some people doing this stuff every day right. and you, you just do, you think it's normal and it's doesn't make it okay. But um, yeah. So uh, you know, to just constantly keep that, circle of people that you trust that aren't with your organization that you can kind of run ethical scenarios by i think that's a that's a takeaway i want them to have too good good and yeah they see it even in their positions now i mean when i teach leadership class again i'll ask them how many of you have been asked to compromise your standards your morals your ethics in the workplace so far in your career and i always hope it's a fairly small number i mean they're not very old the students so they haven't worked for that long and every damn hand will go up. And it always yeah. just annoys me that they're being put in that position that early on in their career. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. What other thoughts? What other ethical areas do you want to throw out some insight in? Oh, let's see. I only look at my other screen because I put sure. some, some notes on there. Yeah. I think not that I like to, to guilt students, but to get, circle back on the, the subject of, of cheating, you know, I usually address that. So I will say when I started, uh, I met with a faculty member who warned me that, hey, cheating's pretty prevalent. You know, here's some tips on how to watch what to look out for. And that uh -huh. was helpful. But then I think I, you know, when, when you interact with the students on a one-to-one -one level, like you just you almost get a little bit, I just can't imagine them doing that. You yeah. know, the, the, and, and so then, um, sure enough, after a few uh, um, of the evaluations at the end of the year, the comment section, people just said, hey, here's how people are cheating. And, you know, whether it's Apple watches or, or whatever, um, I just was like, okay, I, I need to, to make some changes here. But now I, I like to address it head on, and I'm sure it's still happening, and I'm not catching it you know, and, and that's not really my point, but if you right. are already feeling that pressure to cheat or cut corners now, and you don't have necessarily the stresses, maybe you do, but on by and large, they don't have the stresses of mortgage payments and other, yeah. you know, heavy stresses of life, like real world stress too much yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, or, you know, you don't have 10 employees that are uh, putting, putting, um, you know, other their stresses onto you at times too. Like, don't don't put yourself in this situation now where you're where you're mentally sort of rationalizing making these uh, these behaviors because th that inclination to cheat or that pressure to cheat's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. um, and if these are your formative years, make sure that you you form your ethical uh, guidelines correctly. Yeah. And I mean, we know that the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So I think yeah. that the business community, when they come to recruit students, whether it's here or wherever they're going to get their students, I mean, I think it's fair that they have some expectation that we're trying to crack down on that as much as we can and try to develop, develop some better habits on some of those things so it doesn't carry over into their future business careers too. Yeah. 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 One thing I think is interesting is on my, I do an ethical paper, you know, where I give them an ethical dilemma and, and uh, cause org management in and of itself, there's, there's some stuff that lends itself to multiple choice, but for the most part, it's, sure. uh, you know, a thinking framework. So I want them right. to think through scenarios and right. so there's just, you know, a extreme example of people kind of taking advantage of a health insurance loophole that I have them work through. Um, and then at the end I ask, is it okay for companies to expect ethical behavior from their employees? And that's, almost universally the most agreed upon answer but it's super fascinating the different perspectives on it because sure. the, the students that say no they shouldn't expect it but it's up to the company to define like here's what our ethical guidelines are so it's black and white sure. um, and then the people who say yes but the company should still define it so i think people still look to the organization to to form like what what's acceptable there yeah. which is telling but yeah. also I would argue the individual still needs to come in with, 
you know, at least a moral compass to find or, or challenge themselves to continue to get better as well. I would agree. And it's a little bit easier today to try to find out how well you fit with, with the company. I mean, a lot of them have their, their vision statements or mission statements and values yep. and things on their website. Now, part of that could be fluff, unfortunately, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, if there are things that they actually communicate and try to stand up to, you can determine early on whether it's a good fit for you personally or not. So hopefully that's a little bit easier than in the past, maybe when we were initially yeah. on the job markets many years ago. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, definitely. Good topic. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too.